Compensation is a broad term. And it talks about all the rewards that are given to employees. And every organization wants to be the market leader. And once we have proper compensation strategy, we want to have advantage over our competitors. And as we said, we use people to achieve this advantage. And we must have people who possess real and unique skills, who are creative and innovative. Why? Because once we have a proper compensation system, even though, yes, we look at, when we, when we employ, the employees are always trying to look at jobs that fit, that they, can, that they will be happy, that they will give them satisfaction. But apart from that, they also look at the compensation. And so once you have the good compensation skills, or sorry, com sorry, compensation strategy, it enables you to get the best people within the sector and so you employ them. That's why I said it, such people must be attracted and retained. Yes, the skills are there. They are unique. And so you need to attract and retain them. They are not going to look at your buildings, no. But you are going to look at your reward management compensation strategy. As we said, it is not only about salary. No. It, it, it's a whole package of things that you give to the employee. So we said one of the best ways to retain them is to compensate them adequately. And so it's an integral part of the human resource management which helps in, in motivating employees and improving organizational effectiveness. You cannot do without compensation in an organization. Yes, we have said that based on Maslow's um, hierarchy of needs, Money is not everything. There are other things that make people effective. And all these are part of the compensation strategy. The, the incentives that you give them, the promotions, uh, the growth opportunity that you give them, the improvement in their lives that you give to them, all these are part of the compensation strategy that an organization can use to attract and retain the best. So it says it is more than just to attract and retain talented people, yes, it goes beyond. It, it will have to make them effective. Yes, you attract them, you retain them, but then you make them effective as well. That's what I said. It's not only about attraction and retention, but making them effective and useful to the organization. So as we said, people look for jobs that not, not only see their creativity and talent, but that will compensate them both in terms of salary and other benefits. And so... If I'm looking for a job, if you are going, is a lot of you want to go to Bank of Ghana. Yes, it's about, let's say you have done sociology, you have done uh, culture and tourism, and therefore you want to work in a reputable organization. You are going there because, yes, the organization is re reputable, but then you also want to get what, you, what will make you happy. And so it says, once you have an adequate compensation, it enables you to attract a quality workforce. Again, it maintains or it gives satisfaction to existing employees. And then again, you are able to keep quality employees from leaving. That's the re retention aspect of it. So it enables you to attract, maintain satisfaction, and then retention of the, uh, the what you have. These three are very important. What is compensation? Let me move um, over this because these are all definitions that we want to. So what, what we have two types of compensation. We have direct and then indirect compensation. What are the direct compensation? It says it, these are the salaries and other benefits that are monetary. And so the, um, it is in line with industry standards and provides employees with the assurance that they are getting paid fairly. What, what is industry standards? Kendo is an industry. Legon is an industry. And so we, bl we, so, sorry, uh, we belong to one industry, all in the education sector. We have the telecom industry. We have the beer, brewery industry. We have the steel industry. And so the, the industry standards is such that we pay our employees equal, not equally, but in a similar way. So you don't see much difference between somebody working with Ecobank and 
That's a sign chart. Because it's an industry. Because if you pay slightly lower than what the computers are paying, they will leave. So it says, this helps the employer avoid the costly loss of trained staff to a competitor. That is why I said industry standards. You don't have to pay below what your competitors are paying. You will try to pay more than them. And even add things that will make be more attractive than what your competitors give. Now, there are the indirect things. It has, they focus on personal motivations of each person to work. These include free staff um, development courses, like we have study leave would pay, subsidized daycare. It's not common here, but in, in most countries, in advanced countries, because of the um, um, empower, of, uh, of empowerment and effective action, women are now rising. And to encourage women to, to give birth at the same time work to achieve the result, they have daycare centers that women who have given birth can bring their children there and periodically they can go and feed their children without it, without any anxiety. Because if you leave the, the, your child home, you may not know what is happening to the child. Opportunity for promotion and growth within the organization, what is called career development, public recognition, and the ability to uh, effect change in the, at the workplace. Those who are innovative, those who are creative, when you allow them, they can bring a lot of changes without necessarily affecting the organization negatively. What are the components of uh, compensation? There are four. We have wages and salaries, allowances, incentives, and then fringe benefits. The wages are the pay that is given hourly. So we have the daily minimum wage. A person works for one hour, the person receives, let's say, 20 cities, and then Based on the number of hours a person can work, the person receives the allowance for the day. And normally they are paid either daily or monthly or weekly or bi-weekly. And said they are subject to annual in increase. Uh, salaries are also paid monthly. And the two are subject to annual increments. As you observe, every year, Government, for especially when it comes to the wages, government, labor, that is TUC, and then employers will meet and decide on how much they want to pay for an hour. And then salaries, those who have collective bargaining agreement certificates will sit down with their employer and then they will negotiate for annual increments or whatever that they want to do. Then we have allowances, we include house and rent allowance, Transport allowance, as I, um, the university gives lecturers rent allowance, TNT, those who have cars, we have on campus allowance, out of campus allowance. A lot of allowance are given so that it enables if you, you find the work easier or you're coming to campus and then going back will not be a problem. You have even um, petrol allowance that is given to us every month. Then we have incentives. We have um, those things that are linked to um, incentives are performance linked remuneration. Yes, once you have, you have achieved a certain um, level of performance, you are given an incentive as a morale booster. I want you to look out for, for the difference between bonus, profit sharing, gain sharing, and commission on sales. Just check online and get the difference between the four. Then we have friend benefits, problem fund, gratuity, medical care, hospitalization, accident relief, health and group insurance, canteen, uniform recreation. All these allowances, but remember, not all staff can, may benefit from some of these things. Sometimes some of them are given to those in the upper level and then others for all of them. But then the, it is rated based on your rank in the organization. Now, what's the importance of, importance of compensation? Um, compensation is very useful, and if it is good, as you have said that it can help you to attract, maintain satisfaction, and also retain those that you have employed, the best that you have employed. And so it gives proper return to the workers for their contribution to the organization. And so when people have worked for you, you have worked for me, you have I've worked with the university, I've worked for the government, I don't demand they must pay me because I've contrib contributed 
to the development of the university. Now, it imparts a positive control on the efficiency of employees and encourages them to perform better and achieve the specific standards. So, um, once you pay me, and normally once there's a, a, the salary is good, remember we said that if it is good, it maintains the level of satisfaction of employees. And once the employees are satisfied, based on what you have given them, either direct or indirect compensation, it, you are able to maintain them and then it, it helps them to work extra hard. So it forms a base for happiness and satisfaction for the workforce. That minimizes the labor turnover and confers a stable organization. We've spoken about retention strategy, using the compensation as a means to retain the best that you have obtained from the labor market. So it augments the job evaluation process, which in turn helps in setting up the more realistic and available standards. Before we pay compensation, we give compensation, jobs are evaluated. And once we evaluate jobs, we look at the worth of the job. The worth of the job means the contribution that that particular job makes to the overall organiza organizational and um, to, uh, to the entire organization. That is why we have different salary levels in the organization because some of the jobs are seen as more important than others. Uh, it is designed to comply with the various labor acts. Yes, it's an obligation. If you have employed somebody, pay the person. So it's, it's, it, you, that one, there is no option. Once you have employed me, pay me because I have given you what you have asked me to do for you. And remember, we spoke about psychological contracts. That emotional agreement between employees and management that if you do this for me, and I will do that for you. So it says it arises an environment of, of moral efficiency and cooperation among the workers and provides satisfaction to the workers. Once the workers are paid, but at every month, when, 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 if you, you are paid, you are happy. But then, yes, it may not be enough, but the fact that your salary has come, or the fact that you know that at the end of the month you are going to earn something. It, you are happy and you want to also go on to work for them. It stimulates the employees to perform better and show their excellence. Discuss that provides growth and advancement to the deserving employee, bonuses and what have you. And in fact, when it comes to the gain sharing and profit sharing, it is the entire organization, members of the organization. And so what, it, it, one, if you do well and you achieve our standards, we make a certain amount of profit, we give part to you as profit sharing or gain sharing or bonus. And so these ob um, advantages can be seen from three different levels. Those advantages that go to the employer, those that pertain to the employee, and those that pertain to government. So let's see how each the three will benefit. Remember when I want to talk about the salaries and then wages, I said that there's something called the employer, government, and then labor will meet. So the employer here, that is, let's say, labor. The labor will represent the employee. We have the employer and then government. We call it, in Ghana, call it the tripartite committee. They will meet and determine how much wage should be given an hour or pay an, pay an hour worked by any single person. And so for the employer, we use compensation to achieve our strategic goals. How? We use that to attract the best. We call it the efficiency of, of wage theory, where we use salary as a means to attract the best and use the same salary to retain them. Because we pay or we give better compensation than our competitors. So it says the efficiency of wage theory assumes that employee, employers, uh, firms pay more than the market wage because of the belief that high pay attracts better candidates, reduce turnover, and consequently superior performance. And so once we have a proper compensation strategy, the major objective is that we are going to attract the best, retain them, and then achieve superior performance. And it's also, uh, so we have said it's used to retain the best performance in the organization, it's used to attract the best talents, and then we are also able to use it to, to enhance our status as the best paying company, employer of choice, as we said last semester. As I said, contribute to or, to or serve as an impact 
on one status in the society. Then to the employee, that is a means of reward. Um, um, reward after a hard day's work. What I'm doing, at the end of the month, I'm going to be paid. And so I think that so if if I don't come to work and I, I receive my salary, that kind of guilt is there. If you have conscience, you don't work, but at the end of the month you rush to the bank and collect your salary. So I I see that yes, I have given, I have done something, and that is my reward. As a form of security, yes, if I have the money, I'm paid. I know that for the, at least for the rest of the next month, I'm going to have something to depend on. And then it motivates me to also always work better and harder. Then I can use that part of the money that what is given to me to also develop myself, perhaps to build my career or to do things that I think might be relevant to me. Now to the government. So the government is one of the biggest and major employers in the society and is interested in the way people are compensated. Why? Because government doesn't want labor agitations. If there's an agitation, government, it affects government. And you lose investors because they said that the employment sector is not stable. And so governments always try to ensure that employees and employers are always or always have a harmonious relationship so that every time there is peace and you can attract investors. That is why we have the other time, even there is a, a, a problem between an, a, a private company and its employees, government comes in to make sure that things are done the right way so that there is peace in the labor front. So a guy's government to negotiate a tripartite committee in the determination of the minimum wage. That one we have said it already. And then it has an influence on the inflation and the economy as a, as a whole. Yes, um, sometimes if government is determining the minimum wage, they look at how much money is in the system. But kind of too much money chasing fewer goods can bring inflation. And again, little money chasing many goods can also bring about inflation. And so government is always conscious of conscious in determining how much should be paid. But the problem comes in with the, the private sector. That is why the government always try as much as possible to ensure that there is peace and then people, um, there is development and whatever is given to the employees, we are able to use them within the system without causing any problem for the economy. Now, there's a relation, people often say that there's a, there should be a relation between performance and management, performance and then compensation. That is, how much what you produce should determine how much you earn. But when it comes to com, um, pay at risk or uh, the sales, those who are in the sales business, you sell so much, you earn so much. What's called the va variable pay. You sell so much, you earn so much. But in most organizations, it is difficult to measure performance. But then, generally, how you, are, how, how you perform should determine how you receive. For example, in the university, we have promotion. And your promotion is not based on your qualification, but it's based on your rank. And your rank is based on your performance. Which that performance determines the pay that we receive on campus over here. And the same, most organizations, your performance received. There may be a basic salary, salary for some organizations, but in the year, the bonus a person receives will be based on the person's performance. But the bonus goes to individuals, and it is shared based on performance. And so that will determine how much you receive at the end of the financial year. Now, when we are um, in every compensation, now we, are, we are moving to, let's say, salaries. In every compensation structure, salary administration, we have different pay levels because people, different people, based on the worth of the job, are put at certain levels in the organization. And so we are, people are grouped into grades 
in the, that structure. So you can have level one, level two, level three, level four, level five. And so each of them, each of the based on the nature of the job, the level of difficulty, the worth of the job will determine the grade that the per, that person finds himself in. That's as I said, D may be good into grades into which a, a, is attached a pay range, which allows for pay progression related to performance scale, comes all time. And so we can have a grade. Let's say we have four grades. And then in each grade, we have certain different levels. There are four levels in each region. So a person will start, a new employee will start from the first level in a grade. And then when the person goes to the last point of the grade, if the person improves himself, or the based on performance, the person is promoted, then the person moves to the next higher grade to earn a salary which is higher than where he was. And in that second grade, that's a grade B, that person starts from the first point, and if there are six or seven levels, the person will mark time within that point until the person is promoted again and the person is good there. For example, among the lecturers, we have a stand, lecture, a stand lecturer, lecturer, senior lecturer, associate professor, and then professor. These are grades. And so within each grade are certain specific levels. And so if somebody, if somebody has been in the system for two years and a stand lecturer, and you start today, you can be on, on the same level. You are the same grade, but you'll be at a different level, and you are a, on a different level. What, 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 we call this the pay spine. But now I want to look at the factors that influence pay structures, and then the elements that go into define the pay structure, and then the elements that make up the reward package. Now, what factors influence pay structure? So the type of the type of organization and the structure of an organization can influence the pay structure. Remember, we have said that organizations may want to be the best in the industry. And so looking at their level of influence, they may want to give a particular uh, give you a particular structure so that their employees will feel better. And so you see that we start, the first one says the structure of the organization refers to the job structure. And so what job structure do we have? But we have different jobs in care university. Lecturers, administrators, and other, 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 other group. And so each of them will have a structure that will reflect on what they will receive. And, and so, so we have something called job classification. When we classify the job, we know those jobs that have, that requires similar skills, that requires similar classification, um, qualification. And so they are put in their respective structures and then they are rewarded from there. So it says different values are put on the particular job so that so the rewards given commensurate with the value of the job. As I said earlier, the worth of the job is deter determines the kind of structure or salary the person will receive. And so we may not have the we may have the same job, then the same you have the same structure. That's why I said all lecturers have the same salary structure based on the grades that you are you find yourself. And so we have the assistant lecturer that the the and then when it comes to the lecture we have the lecturer and let's say the administrator. We have different jobs. And if we think that our jobs have different values for the university, our salaries will be different. That is why we have there are some administrators whose salaries are similar to that of lecturers because it is thought that their, their role is similar to our role, except that we are found in different sectors of the university. That are called internal relativities. Where we have comparative values of jobs as assessed by performance appraisal or performance management process. And so, just so the laborer will be assessed how much goes into the laborer's work, how much goes into the secretary's work. So, once it is done, we are able to determine what goes into what or who receives what. Two, the business strategy can also determine the pay structure. Because if you want your people to, to achieve, as I said earlier, to achieve so much for you, then you must reward them adequately. Then the job market. And in the job market, there are 
a lot of people over there. And so, sir, you need people to help you to deliver your business goals, and other organizations need these people too. Competition. In the job market, there is competition. And so, you need the same people that other people need. And so, if you want to retain them, then it must influence the strategy. That's what I said. The strategic goals is there, but then the job market, different people are, 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 are attracting from the same pool. So, in the country where there is high unemployment rates. It is easier over here. But in a country where there is low unemployment rates, it becomes a problem. Because you, you want the same people that other people want. And therefore, you need to do something better to get them. And so, so, so what other organizations are paying their skilled personnel will influence how much you pay your people. That's why I said industry standards at the beginning. Now, I want to look at pay structure. The pay structure defines the pay levels for individual jobs. In every organization, the jobs are grouped into grades. And in, in, in each grade has a pay ring attached. And people are allowed to move through the, the range. What it means is that we can have different grades. And within each grade are specific levels that a person has to go through. And so, for example, we have grade A. And grade A has about two or three levels. So if you are employed for, for the start, you start from level one, then level two, level three, then you go to the last point of grade A. And so once you are promoted, if you're not promoted, you stay in the grade forever. But if you are promoted, you move to grade B. And so in grade B2, there are levels. So for, for instance, in the university, we have different grades for the lecturers. Full professor, assistant professor, senior lecturer, lecturer, and then assistant lecturer. So if you are given an employment for the first time, it is assistant lecturer. So there are levels within that grade. And so you mark time, and then within that, say, four or so years, you get to the last point. If you are promoted, then you go to lecturer. The same thing happens if you're probably go to senior lecturer and you earn that res respective pay. And we call it the, um, in Ghana the, uh, the pay spine. There are factors that influence pay structures. And we want to look at that. Then there are elements that you have to uh, look at when you are defining a, a pay structure and um, reward strategy. And then there are elements that also make up a reward. Package. Now, the factors that influence the pay structure include first the structure of the organization. And the structure of the organization, we want to look at the job structure of the organization. And the job structure is such that it, there are different jobs in the organization. And each of the job, each of the jobs, or the, the every job in the organization is valued. And so, based on the value of your job, in other words, the contribution the job makes to the organization, you have the corresponding salary given to you. Apart from that, when we are evaluating the job, we look at the risk level of the job. And so all these things are put, are considered before a particular structure is defined. And then that's what's called the internal relative. Because different, so in the same organization, you may have different jobs. And so each of them will have its corresponding pay structure or pay level. And therefore, all of them will have we belong to a certain group. And so here we have the lecturers, we have the administrators, we have the junior staff, we have seniors, different, different levels. It's all because of the different jobs that are found in the organization, in the university. Then the, the, the business strategy is also very, very important. What the business strategy? You want people to achieve, help you to achieve your strategy, and we have said that we achieve this through people. And so you need to ensure that there is a job market. And in the job market, you have your competitors who are also taken from the same pool. And so if you want to get the best, then pay them well. We spoke about economy of higher wages. And so it says you want to attract the best, retain, and then make them satisfied. And it is the same thing that other people also want. And so if you want to have the best, then pay them well. And especially if you have a, 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 an economy which is, which, we, which have more and a, a, a high rate of unemployment, a high unemployment rate, it creates, um, that one 
you can decide to do anything. But in an economy where unemployment rate is very low, then competition is keen. And so you need to up your strategy so that you get the best from what you want to have. And so it says, what, so what, what organization are paying their skilled person will influence how much you pay your people. External relativities. You said we have internal relativities, which is within the organization. My job and your job, we are different, and so we pay differently. And then my company and your company, we are, we are different. Overall, we are the same. But we want to see whether we are going to pay them or we maintain them or we give them out. Or even apart from even our industry, there are other people who may need them as well. For example, if, if somebody is, a, uh, is an IT specialist, that person can work in different organizations. And so if you want to maintain a person, then make sure that you pay the person or you give the person the best reward system so that the person will stay. Then the needs of the employee. Also, what does the employee need? Every employee, your employee, don't put it that way, will need something. Especially, we have housing problems, we have transport problems, we have perhaps the, the market system in the employee. There's high inflation. The economy is not stable. How do you do to your employees? And so you need to consider the needs of your employees and you pay them accordingly or you reward them accordingly. What do they need? Especially what do you, they need most, you give it to them. It can be food. You don't want them to go out to eat, so you provide food there and then they enjoy the food free of charge or at a subsidized rate. Health, these are part of the strategies that you are supposed to make to maintain and retain attract and retain your employees. Then your tradition. And so, as, a, as an organization, so this, is how it, this is how it has been done since the memorial, and therefore it must be continued, like the way it is used to pay. So, and as an organization, we have a tradition, we pay well. And so, you want to maintain that dignity. That is why people want to work with you. And so when that tradition is there, you don't bring that tradition, but you move on. Then location or side of the business also influence pay structure. What is this that you're talking about? Once the different environments will attract different rewards. Somebody working in the UK, somebody working in Ghana, the, the location is different. Inflation rate here is different from over there. And over there, perhaps the cost of living is very high, and therefore, you may want to pay them high so that they will be able to take care of themselves very well there. That is why it's what the, the needs of the employee. In Ghana, yes, we may not have so much, but we say that, oh, because of the fact that living standards are not very high as compared to a certain area, we may want to pay them slightly lower so that they will be able to, so that they will not suffer so much. In the same way, even in GES, there is this facility that is given to those who are serving in rural areas. That if you are uh, normally, you must be in the service for four years before you qualify, or five years before you qualify for certain leave. But those, for those who are, who are teaching the rural areas, they are given three years. It's a reward system that is given to them so that it will serve as a motivation to stay in the rural area. Again, they are to their salary is um, topped up a little. So uh, if they are given, if the, uh, a person of com comparable status in the city is receiving, uh, they are, are receiving 1,000 cities, and I also receive 1,000 cities, I can be given 200 cities um, um, a month in addition to my salary so that it's such a motivation for me to go to the village. That is why they want to use to attract people to the villages. And so these are also things that organizations use. GES is losing it, and I don't know how effective it has been. So that's what I was saying. If one day two people are from the, the two different locations, uh, the village man applies, who, the one who's in the village applies for study leave, the one who's in the city applies for study, and they are all set for four years. Preference will be given to the person in the rural area or the deprived area. Now, what elements go into defining reward strategy? Performance. But as I said earlier, how should performance be awarded, but be measured. But in most cases, it's about outcome. How much were you able to contribute? And so if 
there's a clear-cut definition on how these things are done. Nobody has a problem when the person is paid based on performance. Remember when we were doing this um, distributive justice, said equity rule, you, you are paid based on your performance. And then the market also comes into play. There is competition in the environment, just as we said earlier. And so if you want to, to be the best, to get the best person, then you provide a, a good reward system so that the best people will come to you. You can retain them, then you can make them satisfied. And then teamwork. I also, we are also talking about the fact that, yes, we need to emphasize teamwork, but we also need to emphasize individual performance in the team. I also said it, that reward teamwork, but you need also to identify those members in the team who were exceptional in the team and reward them. So that the team members would themselves recognize this person actually did well. And so that person must be attracted with or maintained. Else there will be social loafing. Those lazy team members who will not work but will want to win or to achieve the same thing because he has a team member who is so hard working that he works for, for all of them and every demand they receive the same salary. That one will not, it will not be good for the, the hard worker. It will serve as a demotivation. And he can also decide to reduce his work rate. It can affect the team. the team. So it is better to reward teamwork. But at the same time, you need to ensure that the best person in the team is also rewarded. In the same way, in your longer say, I, I believe that you are, you are doing group work. In that case, too, those members in the group who work hard earn more marks than the one who didn't work hard. That one is it's clear. Because so if there's time, you come for defense, and the way you answer the questions will tell the lecturer, the person who worked extra hard, and that one, that person will earn a higher mark than those who didn't work hard. Then you also need to communicate. So the employee must understand why he's being paid a certain amount. Communication should be a two-way here. And so you discuss, because of contrib your contribution, we are paying so much because we are we have a difficulty. We are going to pay pay you this now. Those of you who, who, who listen to who are football fanatics, now it is being said because of the coronavirus, players must reduce their salaries or must be willing to cut their salaries so that the the, the clubs will not suffer so much. And some of the players have agreed. So some have said that they are um, some teams have agreed. Said they are going to use part of their salaries to help the government to do to work or to provide resources to maintain the spread of the virus. And so once we communicate, we sit down and we agree on the reason why we are paying so much or we are paying this much. Once the people agree, it becomes acceptable to everybody. So you need to communicate why the people are being paid, what they are being paid. And that one helps a lot. Then. You need to evaluate how effective it is. But has it been able to maintain your staff? Has it been able to increase productivity? You need to evaluate to see how, where you are standing, especially when it comes to in, in, internally, how satisfied are the employees? And then how externally, how are you competing in the market? Once this is, is done and you think that it is effective, you can maintain it. If it's not effective, you review it and make sure that it is effective so that you can retain your best performers. Now, what elements go make up a reward strategy? We have a base salary, which is basically the salary that is given to you every year. And for the month, you need to divide that salary by 12 to earn that monthly salary. And then we have the variable pay that is based on, like, pay, pay based on performance, compensation, we put that way. Oh, commission put that way. How much you earn is based on what you produce. So you are paid based on, on, you are paid on commission basis. And then the benefits that, are, that come to employees at the end of the month. Thank you very much. And um, if there are Gaps. Sometimes you see that uh, it's a, a problem is because if you're not speaking to people directly, it becomes uh, speaking to television, uh, speaking to a camera, it becomes difficult to flow like um, the way you you flow in a normal classroom. 
So I hope that you you um, this one will f- you you find this one useful in the in your attempt to understand the two topics that we have treated. But I, I encourage you to also read the notes and once we come online to make to do discussion, if there are anything that we need to discuss further, we'll talk about it. Thank you very much and God bless us all. Thank you.